The Bible is the word of Almighty God, therefore it does not need to be defended, only understood. The purpose of this program is to present to you, our viewers, the key to understanding the scriptures. There is within the pages of the Bible itself a God-given design for studying the Bible. All the confusion that exists within Christianity today is the result of two failures. Number one, ignoring God's design for Bible study, and number two, failing to believe what the Bible actually says. We remind you of what the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 5.18, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall abide forever. We're instructed in Romans 3.4, Let God be true, but every man a liar. We are informed by 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And as well, God tells us how to study his word in 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rather dividing the word of truth. That's God's design, rather dividing the word of truth. Not according to your liking, not into verses you want or don't want to obey, but making distinctions where God makes distinctions obeying that portion of the Bible that is specifically addressed to us today. Now, here is our teacher, Pastor Thomas Bruchet. Hello again, and it's my privilege to be with you. I'm sure glad that you tuned us in, and by whatever reason you came across this channel and see this program, I hope you'll stay with us as we study the Bible together. This is a, a Bible studying program. It's the message of grace, and we have a message from God, which is indeed the message of grace. You're going to see why today. We're going, to, we're going to study something that's very interesting, something that's going to teach you something that I'm trying to teach several pastors. It's a message, it's something to do with what, what down through the time, it just seems to have been ignored, but it's something that's very obvious when you start studying the Bible. I've sent letters out, and we've tried to get some pastors to realize that when you study the Bible, that there is more than one gospel in the Bible. And uh, I know when pastors hear that, that, that really uh, strikes them hard. What do you mean there's more than one gospel? Everybody knows we're supposed to go out and preach the gospel. And uh, they talk as if there's only one gospel in the Bible. And that's far from the truth. There's several gospels in the Bible. There's two main gospels in the New Testament that I want to share with you today. It's called by four different names. Uh, but we're, we're going to talk about two of them. And, and you'll see the names as we go along. And I want to explain to you what they are. Now, before you get too uh, alarmed, like many of them who hear that term, more than one gospel, two gospels, before that bothers you too much, let me explain to you that the term gospel simply means good news. And if you realize that, that the term just simply means good news, then you'd realize that when you read the Bible, God has more than one good news for mankind. He has several good news. There's the good news that concerns Jesus Christ. There's good news concerning a kingdom. All of it centers in Jesus Christ. But there's different aspects of good news. For instance, Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist begins his public ministry and he says something unusual. It says, In those days, verse 1 of Matthew 3, In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah, as the New Testament says it, spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So John the Baptist come, and he began to preach a message saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why should the people repent? And the people here is definitely the nation of Israel. John the Baptist was in no other country but Israel. He's at the Jordan River, and he's telling them to repent, and that is to change their mind, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, you know that word repent just simply means a change of mind. People make it mean, try to make it mean more than it does. But you know, the nation of Israel have not seen a prophet of God for over 400 years. That's the time between the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, until the writing of the New Testament that opens up with the preaching of John the Baptist. There's 400 years between Malachi and John the Baptist. And when 400 years of silence, where no one's heard the voice of God or heard a message from God other than what had been promised, you know, when you don't hear something for a while, you begin to think, well, maybe it's never going to come about. The Old Testament promised a kingdom to the nation of Israel. 
the land of Abraham and the throne of David in which Jesus Christ, God's Messiah, would come and reign over Israel someday. And after 400 years of waiting and not hearing anything from God, people began to think it wasn't going to come about. So John begins to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. In other words, all the silence has been broken now. John the Baptist begins to speak and reminding them not just that it's coming about, but it's at hand. He's going to introduce to them the Messiah. Well, that's what he does. He comes and he baptizes, and that's to identify the believing remnant, the fact that they have repented, changed their mind, and are looking for the Messiah. He baptizes the Messiah who come to be identified with the nation of Israel, and both baptism, they're identified together, the believers with the Messiah. Now, John the Baptist did that. Then in chapter 4 of the book of Matthew, Jesus Christ begins his public ministry. In Matthew chapter 4, it says in verse 17, from that time began Jesus to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. So the Lord Jesus Christ takes the same message of John the Baptist, and he says the same thing. Yeah, indeed, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, in verse 23, it says this concerning the message that Jesus Christ preached. Now, remember what Jesus Christ said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. Verse 23 says, Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and, and they brought unto him all those sick people that were taken of diverse diseases and tormented, and those possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had palsy, and he healed them. And they followed him a great multitude of people from Galilee and from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, from Judea, and beyond Jordan. So there, a great group of people begin to follow the Lord Jesus Christ as he ministered throughout all the land of Israel, from the northern part of Galilee down to Jerusalem. He begins to walk and preach, and we know what he's saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. But verse 23 says that he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. That's good news to the nation of Israel. Good news that your longed, hoped for Messiah has come. And with him is going to be an establishment of a kingdom in which you are going to be God's royal people on the, in the earth. That's good news. For the nation of Israel to hear that, boy, that was a real blessing and a real time of excitement to the believer. To the skeptic, it was uh, another uh, false teacher that come along, someone not to listen to. But Jesus Christ wasn't just another false teacher that came along because he had the credentials. He began to heal. Because in the kingdom that he's going to establish, the Bible says that the desert is going to blossom like a, like a, a rose and, and that the waters are going to break forth as streams in the desert and the barren place is going to become fruitful and there will be no sick. The lame man will leap like a harp. The blind man shall see. The deaf shall hear. These things are going to happen in the kingdom that Jesus Christ will establish in Israel. And he begins to do those things to verify that indeed the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the preacher, the, the, the gospel that John the Baptist began to preach, the gospel that Jesus Christ began to preach, and if you go to Matthew chapter 12, the, the 12 were sent out to preach the very same thing. You go, the way, go not into the way of the Gentiles, into the city of Samaria, enter ye not. And as you go, preach and say, repent, the kingdom of heaven's at hand. That message is called the gospel of the kingdom, the good news about the kingdom. Now the message that I'm coming on the air today to preach to you is not the good news that the kingdom of heaven's at hand. It's not good news today because the king's not here. This began to pre be preached when the Messiah was in their midst and he began to manifest the, the, key, the kingdom healing that, that was promised. But Jesus Christ since then has been rejected and has ascended back into heaven and has promised to come back and finish what he began in his earthly ministry. But in the meantime, he raised up the Apostle Paul, and he sent the Apostle Paul out with another gospel. In Acts chapter 20, the Apostle Paul, after he has ministered some time, and he's, he wants to go and share the same truth that he's preaching to the Gentiles. He wants to go and share it to the, to the, to the nation of Israel. God warned him not to, how Israel would treat him when he got there. But he wanted to go and do it, and he meets with the the elders of Ephesus, and he says goodbye to them. And he says in verse 24, None of these things move me, the afflictions that he's going to go through when he gets to Jerusalem. None of these things move me, neither count I myself dear, uh, count my life dear unto myself, 
so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The Apostle Paul says he just wants to finish with joy everything that God sent him to do. And who sent him to do it? He calls it the ministry which I received of the Lord Jesus. This is after Jesus Christ walked the earth, after he was crucified, after he was buried, after he rose three days later, after the 40 days he continued to walk and teach his 12 apostles, after he ascended up into heaven, after the Holy Spirit was sent down, after he continued to deal with the nation of Israel in the early part of the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 9, God miraculously, Jesus Christ, miraculously saved the Apostle Paul by blinding him with a light as he persecuted anyone who would believe in Jesus Christ. He saved the Apostle Paul and sent him out to go preach to the Gentiles. And what is it that the Apostle Paul said that he had to preach to the Gentiles? He said, to finish his course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, here it is, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. To share good news of God's grace. God's grace means what cannot be earned and what cannot be deserved. God's favor upon man that man does not deserve. And you know, when you think of mankind and the sinful nature of man, man in the past and his rejection of God the Father in the Old Testament, the rejection of Jesus Christ in the New Testament when he walked the earth, the rejection of the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit came, that this whole world needs and ought to be damned for rejecting God. But God in His grace reached down and sent the Apostle Paul out with some good news that, yes, you don't deserve me, but by my grace I'm going to give you everlasting life. And this gospel is called the gospel of the grace of God. Not the good news about a kingdom, but good news about salvation as a free gift from God through Jesus Christ. For instance, in the book of 1 Corinthians, we take Paul's gospel. We know very clearly what they were preaching in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John concerning the gospel of the kingdom. But here Paul defines for us what it is when he says the gospel of the grace of God. What is he testifying? Well, he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I've preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Now he's called it the gospel in verse 1, and he says, now remember what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain, which mean is not to fully believe what I've said to you. But here, here's what I've said to you, verse 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The gospel of the grace of God is that when Christ died, he didn't just die because Israel rejected him. He had a plan and a purpose in his death. And his plan and his purpose in that death is that when he died, he died for our sins. That means he took our sins away. The very sin that Israel was doing in crucifying him, he was paying for that sin himself. He died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's the good news that God has for us, is that yes, while we totally do not deserve Him, His forgiveness, His salvation, and we deserve damnation by our works, by His grace He'll save us if we'll believe the message of the Gospel. The message of our Gospel is called the preaching of the cross. Now that's not what they were preaching in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They were preaching a kingdom, not a cross. It was Christ who was going to be the king, but we preach Christ who was crucified, as the Apostle Paul said. When you compare that, when you come over to, for instance, Matthew chapter 16, that's not the message that Peter and them were preaching. Matthew chapter 10, they were sent out to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 16, it says in verse 21, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and rise again the third day. That's the first time Jesus began to tell his disciples. This is Matthew 16. They've already been sent out to preach in Matthew chapter 10. And when he starts telling that he must be, go uh, to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders, the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and rise the third day, 
It says in verse 22, Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. And the reason Peter did that is that's not the message Peter was preaching. He was preaching good news that the Messiah is here and the kingdom's at hand. And when Jesus said, I've got to go to Jerusalem and die first, that didn't make sense to Peter. That wasn't the message. See, Peter didn't preach the message of the cross during the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. He preached the message of the kingdom at hand. And they didn't understand it. You know, this, this goes on where they, that non-understanding, Jesus Christ tells them several times. For instance, again, the very next chapter, in chapter 17 of Matthew, in verse 22, it reads this, And while they abode at Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and, shall, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall rise again. And they were exceedingly sorry. You know, Paul, when he writes about the cross, he says, I will glory in nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. In the book of Galatians, let me find that verse for you. Galatians chapter 6, Paul talks about glorying in the cross. He says, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth or uncircumcision, but a new creation, a new creature. We're made new in Jesus Christ today. And that's through the message of the cross. And Paul says, I glory in the cross. These men, when Jesus Christ said he's going to go to Jerusalem and die, they were exceedingly sorry, the Bible says. It goes on to say, for instance, again, in Matthew chapter 20. You know, they, 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 he keeps explaining to them that he's going to die, and they're not getting the message because that's not the good news that they were proclaiming. The good news of the cross is the message that was proclaimed after Jesus Christ, wrote, Jesus Christ rose from the dead, after he ascended into heaven, after he saved the Apostle Paul, and explained to the Apostle Paul all that the cross meant for the salvation of man. But when he walked the earth, the message was a good news about a kingdom. There's no doubt about it. In Matthew chapter 20, again, we read these verses. In verse 17, it says, Jesus going up, going up to Jerusalem took the twelve disciples apart uh, in the way, and said unto them, Behold, we go to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed into the chief, uh, unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him unto the Gentiles to mock, to scourge, and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. Now you don't hear any reply at this point. They're just left speechless. But you know, when you read this same account in Luke chapter 18, it's the same, same time, Luke tells us what response. He tells us what was going on in the mind of these apostles when he said that. And after he said those things, it says in verse 34 of Luke 18, And they understood none of these things, and this saying was hid from them, neither knew they the things that were spoken. So they had no idea, no comprehension of what Jesus Christ was doing when he was talking about going to Jerusalem and dying. That was a message that was revealed later. Now, I say that to you so that you realize that they were preaching the good news of the kingdom. They were preaching the kingdom of heaven was at hand. It was the twelve apostles preaching it to the nation of Israel because it was their promise. When God set aside the nation of Israel and by His grace opened up a time where He was going to save or send Paul out to preach to all of mankind, to preach the Gentiles, there was a whole different message. We now have the message of God's grace preached by the Apostle Paul, not by the twelve apostles, going out to the Gentiles, not the nation of Israel, and it's about our salvation of our soul through the cross of Jesus Christ, the work that was accomplished on the cross by our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a whole different message, even a different messenger going out to a different group of people in a whole different time period. And some people, when they read the Bible, get those, don't realize that there's two different messages that, that the New Testament centers around. God's message for Israel and God's message for us apart from the nation of Israel. You know, that shows up together when they began to question, that is, they, the twelve apostles and others in Israel, began to question the ministry of the Apostle Paul. And, you know, you, you come to the book of Galatians, and, and, and it just comes together. I mean, there's one a book of the Bible that just deals with it, chapter 2 of Galatians. Paul goes to Jerusalem to tell them, tell the apostles what he's preaching among the Gentiles. It says, And I went up, in verse 2, by revelation, and communicated unto them. Paul went to the twelve apostles in Jerusalem 
to communicate unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which are of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Paul says, I went to the twelve apostles to preach, tell them the gospel that I preached to the Gentiles. Why? It was different than the gospel the twelve was preaching to Israel. There's no doubt about it. You go down to verse 6, it says, But to those who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God accepts no man's persons. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. When they met together and they began to analyze each other's ministry and message, they couldn't add anything to what Paul, to what Paul already knew. But it goes on to say, but con contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Now listen, that verse says there's two gospels. The gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to Paul, as the gospel of the circumcision was to Peter. Some people say, well that just means Peter preached to the circumcision, Paul preached to the uncircumcision. No, it means there was a good news that regarded the circumcision, and there's good news that regarded the uncircumcision. Peter preached the good news that belonged to the nation of Israel. Paul preached the good news that God sent, out, sent him out to preach to the Gentiles. It says, for, for he that wrought effectual in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision. There's that. Now Peter is the apostle of the Jews. The same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Now, what Paul is saying is that I went and communicated the gospel of the uncircumcision to the twelve because all they knew was the gospel of the circumcision. Then he stops and, and shows his credentials that he that wrought effectually, God the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ working through Paul is the same, is the same power that was working through Peter. But he worked through Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision. The same was mighty toward Paul to the apostleship of the Gentiles. Now let me ask you, what apostle is your church built on today? If your church is built on the apostle Peter and you're a Gentile in the age of grace, then your church is built on the wrong person, the wrong ministry, the wrong message. The message that God has for the world today is the message that he sent out through the apostle Paul to preach the message of his grace in this age of his grace to the Gentiles. And, and the Apostle Paul ought to be the one that you turn to and say, he's my apostle with my message from Jesus Christ. And when James, it says, Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, Paul speaking here, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. So the Apostle Paul realized, or got them to realize, Peter, James, and John, that he had a ministry to the Gentiles and they should restrict their ministry to the nation of Israel because God in the future will fulfill his ministry to the nation of Israel, but in the meantime it has, he has interrupted it to send out the gospel of the grace of God. You know, I'd like to say one last thing as we're wrapping things up here, and that is the gospel of the kingdom began with the preaching of John the Baptist and continued with the Lord Jesus Christ and the twelve apostles and wrapped in that message, John the Baptist preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. John the Baptist preached a message about water baptism. And the way that a person received Jesus Christ and got into that kingdom is he repented and turned back to the promise of God and believed the promise of God and through water baptism identified himself with Jesus Christ, who was going to be the king of that kingdom. But you know, when the kingdom isn't the message and isn't the gospel today, then neither is water baptism the message, and it has nothing to do with the gospel today. Because John the Baptist came to baptize the nation of Israel and to prepare them and identify them with their king, Jesus Christ, who was going to establish a kingdom. When the kingdom is set aside and God reaches down in grace and saves man by his grace, it's apart from water baptism. You see it when Peter goes to Cornelius, and Cornelius gets the Holy Spirit apart, and Cornelius was a Gentile, and to Peter's amazement, Cornelius got the Holy Spirit apart from water baptism. Later on, Peter recounts that and says that God purified the Gentiles' hearts by faith. And it's by faith alone that a person saved today. That's why Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourself, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
All the glory, all the message today centers in the cross as the full complete payment of sin. We're cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ and we're saved by our faith in His blood. And that's the message of the cross. It's totally apart of, from water baptism. The salvation that we have. The Apostle Paul, he talks about in his earthly ministry, he indeed water baptized. And it caused a problem. As many today say that they've been baptized Presbyterian or baptized Lutheran, baptized Methodist, baptized Catholic, and so forth. So at the city of Corinth, people were arguing over what they were baptized. And it says, some were saying, nah, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, I'm of Christ. Paul says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in, in the name of Paul? He says, I thank God I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any would say that I have baptized in my own name. And I baptize also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any other. Now Paul's saying, I thank God I didn't baptize any more than I did. But he names the few that he did, and he says, besides that, I'm not sure if I did baptize any more, at least there at Corinth. But now he goes on to say something else. He says, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us that are saved, it's the power of God. See, Paul says, Christ didn't send me to baptize. He sent Peter to baptize, John to baptize, but when he sent Paul out with a message of grace, Paul says, he didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. And the gospel that he preaches is the message of the cross, which to the world is foolishness. Saved just by believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the payment of my sins. To the world, that's foolishness. But to us who will believe, it's the power of God. And so, my friend, you can be saved today if you're willing just to believe in what Jesus Christ has done for you. Will you believe in His grace? Will you believe in His cross? Will you believe in His blood? We hope this program has been an eye-opener to you. We are not out to destroy anyone's faith, but to establish your faith upon the truth. Only then will you experience real liberty. The truth shall set you free. If we can be of any further assistance to you, we would love to help you, or if you would like any of the free literature you see on your screen, you may call or write Grace Bible Church, 13630 Common Road, Warren, Michigan, 48093. Our phone number is area code 313-778-5032. Once again, that's Grace Bible Church, 13630 Common Road, Warren, Michigan, 48093 area code 313-778-5032. This program was presented freely to you in cooperation with this local public cable station. Thank you for sharing this time with us. Join us again this time next week to learn more about God's message of grace. Until then, this is Daniel Schulert speaking for all of us at Grace Bible Church, praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being lightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe.